Okay, thank you for the opportunity to talk here. Uh, I will mainly be presenting the work that I did with Francesco in my, during my PhD. It was, a, it was not all of my PhD, but a part of it. So there is some, um, and this was also mainly work done in the second month that I did at Bielefeld. Now, thanks to all the previous speakers, I don't have to introduce so much about Li Yang zeros, but my goal here is to tell you what we can extract on the lattice about these continuum things like Li Yang at singularities and zeros. So the plan of the talk is to briefly introduce what I need for my talk about Li Yang zeros and the method that I use to probe these Li Yang zeros, and then some examples of success where the combination of probing Li Yang zeros by rational approximation leads to some evidence of understanding phase transitions. And if I have time, I'll talk about something that I'm doing right now with Fridjof and Christian at Bielefeld. This is not related to rational approximations, but it's an evidence in, in the direction of we can extract things like universal location of Li Yang at singularities from lattice calculations and match FRG very well. Um, so to start, since Vladimir mostly spoke about the universal location of Li Yang at singularities, I want to go a step before. Li and Yang in very long ago gave us another way to look at phase transitions. The, the traditional way to look at phase transitions on finite volumes, as uh, Owe also mentioned, is to look at cumulants and the finite size scaling of cumulants. But we can go another way, and that way is look at zeros of uh, ZGC. Now, this, if there is a phase transition in the system, uh, free energy, which is a function of the log of Z, will have non-analyticities non in it. And if Z has a zero, then the free energy has a divergence. So, and in a finite volume, we cannot have a phase transition. So basically, if you represent ZGC as a function of fugacity, you can see that for a finite volume, it's a finite polynomial, a finite polynomial with strictly positive coefficients, which means it cannot have any zeros on the real uh, greater than zero Z axis. So the only place where Z can have zeros is in the infinite volume limit, where we expect phase transitions to happen, or in the complex parameter space. Now, the way that we will probe these zeros is by constructing thermodynamic observables. Like I said, zeros of Z will occur poles of the observable that we want to study. Now, just another brief slide about what we expect from Liang zeros. So this, first, if you look at the top picture, okay, this slide is basically representing what you would expect in the easing model, because for the easing model, you can rigorously prove that all the Liang zeros or all the divergences of Z lie on the imaginary h-axis. If your system has a phase transition, a second order phase transition, then at TC, then in the infinite volume limit, these zeros, which come as complex conjugate pairs, they will pinch the real axis, but never touch it. If you're not at TC, then these will um, saturate at a point which you, which also Vladimir spoke about, is the Liang edge singularity. But this is always in the region where there is no transition. So in the in the safe region, you will find this edge singularity. On the lattice, at just one finite volume, you can't say much. You have to take, you have to do a finite volume scaling to understand where are you? Are you here or are you here? Liang zeros, on top of just telling us about phase transitions. They also tell us about the nature of phase transitions. In the infinite volume limit, if the zeros cross the real axis, then you have a first order transition. If they pinch the real axis, you have a second order, and this is what we are interested in. Now, the method. Now, thanks to Gerald, I don't have to speak about the benefits of other resubmissions to rational approximation resubmissions to take like uh, two functions. So I will start with a very uh, basic example, this function has a branch cut between minus half and minus six. So it's on the negative z-axis. Now I just look at the uh, greater than zero z-axis uh, z where there is no singularity and you can see even if you, it doesn't matter how large 
coefficients you use for the Taylor series, they will not, uh, they will not give a faithful representation of the functions because of the radius of convergence, which is defined by this guy. Whereas the rational function gives you a very nice representation of the function. But now you will ask, where is the information about the radius of convergence? We have to look at the zero pole structure of this function. And again, from Gerald's presentation, a branch cut, a rational function only knows how to show you what a branch cut is by interlacing zeros and poles. It doesn't only give you that. It gives you something very interesting. So the, the branch cut, cut starts at a zero, and zeros are given by blue, and red is the pole. And at, six, at minus six, it's a pole. So it will always keep this structure. So if you increase the number of the order of your uh, rational approximation, it will keep putting more and more zeros and poles, but it will always keep a zero because of this and always keep a p p pole here. So it's a very nice representation. Now, how do we construct? These are not the standard uh, rational approximations that you construct from just a single point. What we do is we obtain Taylor coefficients at many different points, and we try to find a rational function which fits these coefficients. So what we are doing here is we are avoiding higher cumulants at a single point. Instead, we are exchanging that information uh, by sampling our function at many different points in an interval. Uh, the way we, there are a few ways we solve this system. The way I did it, at least for the purpose of this slide, is by solving a linear system. And of course, the Taylor coefficients that we measure on the lattice come with their error bars. And the error bars, that the way that we include our error bars in this system is that we solve it repeatedly for an order of 2,000 times, 5,000 times, depending on the problem. And we determine the location of the closest singularity. This is how we incorporate errors. Now, just an example. I'm not going to tell you what this function is, but it has a singularity, a closed singularity here. Uh, if you can see, I'm not sure, but the, the red point is the analytic pole of the function. If you go from left to right, you will see that I have increased the noise in the system, and the blue points are uh, the poles that I extract uh, uh, when I sample the function with noise, and if I increase the noise in the system, the poles sort of go away. And if I stay with the same uh, noise, but I increase the order of the pade, which is also something Gerald said in his talk, I, I can again control the noise uh, on the function. Now, what's the first place that I want to apply this uh, program to? Uh, the combination of using rational functions to get Li Yang zeros is the 2D easing model. Um, so what we do is now, again, a little bit contradictory to what Vladimir said. We don't need to do imaginary edge simulations where there is a sign problem in easing models. For what we do, we only need to do real edge. And the reason is this, that Vladimir studies Li Yang edge singularities in the continuum limit or the infinite uh, uh, volume limit. I study them on a finite lattice where there is no phase transition. So my radius of convergence is not zero. It is something. And there is a complex singularity in the imaginary edge plane. And so I can see if I can detect it or not. And as I, as you expect, as you increase the vo lattice volume, uh, the transition becomes stronger. But it's not a phase transition at these volumes. This is just to show how the cumulant looks like. Now what I will show you next is one image of a zero pole structure at L15 lattice and one image at the large lattice that we, the largest one that we did. This is, you will have to pay attention here. So the only true structure of this function exists at imaginary edge, which is, which is depicted very well by this zero pole structure that we extract from our rational approximations. Why? Because all the information on the real edge axis is, is not physical or it's not mathematical either because all these uh, zeros, et cetera, come with residue zero. The only genuine information of the function is on the imaginary edge axis. 
which looks like it could be a branch cut. As I increase the lattice volume, I see a greater accumulation of these uh, zeros. And if I remove all the other structure and just keep the singularities, you will see that they come in complex conjugate plane. They lie on the imaginary edge axis. And if I increase, the, and I'm at TC, so if I increase the volume, they do go closer to the real edge axis. So in this, we have verified the circle theorem that we expect the Liang zeros to obey in the Ising model case. And also that the number of these zeros have to increase the Liang zeros have to increase as you increase the lattice volume. If there is a phase transition, and we know there is uh, at TC for the easing model. Now, can we extract some physics from these zeros, or is it just verifying theorems? We can. It is known what the finite scaling uh, 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 effect or, or the finite scaling formula looks like for these zeros. This b by nu minus d is just minus beta delta, which we know for the 2D easing model to be minus 1.875. Um, what I do is I fit my closest poles that I get for the different lattice volumes to this function. I already take into account the correct uh, beta delta, minus beta delta, and I see what c should be. And you can see from the fit gives me C1, so I am, and these are with error bars, and they fit the data. So our data is consistent, thankfully, to the 2D easing model critical exponents. So Francesco has done more analysis on this using Fisher zeros, which I will not talk about, and you can go to the proceedings or to his lattice talk for them. Now I move, now that if you have some, if you have built some faith in the method, now we move to the theory of interest, which is QCD. And we will do 2 plus 1 flavor QCD at Imagine View. The motivation is that we are all trying to find the QCD phase diagram in the real mu B plane, but we can't because of the sign problem. One probe that we have is to tailor expansions around mu B equals 0, but as you heard from all the, lat all the talks before, the higher cumulants are very noisy and very expensive to calculate. So. So then, the, then what lattice people turn to is simulation that purely imaginary mu b. And here, there is no sign problem. And so you can do a direct lattice simulation that imagine mu b, and then you can try to do an analytic continuation. Of course, the analytic continuation is limited by complex singularities of QCD. One of those we will discuss. Recently, uh, okay, so our method that we do here is combine uh, imaginary mu and zero mu simulations into, and we resum it into a, a rational approximation. So again, just a brief, we use staggered fermion, so this is what our action looks like, partition function looks like. We do two plus one physical uh, mass QCD. We do imaginary mu simulations. The first uh, singularity that we want to see if we are sensitive to is a Robert Weiss transition. Uh, you can look at this paper, historical paper, for why there should be a phase transition at all uh, T greater than TRW. Now, as you also saw from Ove's uh, presentation, the, the uh, this point, the universality class of this point is determined by what quark masses you are using. If you use intermediate quark masses, this is expected to be second order, which means this is a crossover and this is a first order line. We, so we are basically, what we do is we do our lattice simulations at low T and we approach TRW, which um, from this paper, we have an estimate for the lat exact lattice that we are using. We have an estimate for it, so we approach it. The observable that we will approximate using the rational function is number density. Why? Because of some very nice symmetry, pro symmetry properties of uh, Z in the complex, in the imaginary mu plane. Um, so apart from being even, that it has to be, it is also periodic with 2 pi periodicity. And if I take the derivative of log of this function, it will be odd. 
and also periodic. So I don't need to simulate this in the whole 0 to 2 pi interval. I can just do 0 to pi and then uh, replicate the data after that based on this oddness. This is just some basics of the lattice setup that we used. We use improved Wilson action for the gauge part, HISC action. Uh, the LCP was determined by physical pi on mass. Of course, the lattices and the lattice spacing that we use for our studies is nothing compared to the precision things that we heard about yesterday, but it's still something. Um, so we use, as I said before, we use three, in our collaboration, we use three methods to solve for these rational functions. The first one is what I basically do whenever I have to solve as a lead linear solver. Second one is done by K Kevin Zambello, and he usually, so the way I incorporate error is by solving the system repeatedly many, many number of times with different coefficients. What he does is it's a smarter way. You include the errors. You basically solve an optimization problem, and you weight the rational function with the errors on the Taylor coefficients. Then there was a third method that we tried, which is based on Goche, Basar, and Gerald's work. It's not exactly the same conformal map, but it, it's a map that we use. So first, before showing you the singularity structure, I just want to show you some results of the approximation itself. So you have to forget about the legends now because we use different methods to solve. But the idea is the, the, the circles are the data and, okay, no. I think I haven't shown data here, but these are all the number density approximations from the Pade. The data will come later for this n tau 4. So basically, we did this analysis for n tau 4 and 6. And this is something that we, so this is basically what we are interpolating. This is an extrapolation. We don't know what real uh, number density should look like, but it also looks similar to what people have found. We can integrate this function and calculate the free energy. And we see that as we increase the temperature, it becomes like this, so it approaches a robert weiss transition. Uh, here are the data. So for n tau 6, we did something more, not just the baryon number density, but also the charge number density we simulated. And since they have, since they're expected to have similar symmetry structure, and you can see that the data and the function, it's an interpolation, so thank God it approximates well. Now let's look at the singularity structure. In the easing model, you saw everything on the, re, uh, on the imaginary edge axis. Now, here also, it's, uh, it's on the real, so the structure is along the real. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's 90 degrees shifted to what you would expect from the easing model, but this is because how the scaling fields are related to each other. So symmetry breaking field in the easing model and the robert weiss plane are related to each other by 90 degrees. So, what we see is as we approach the robert weiss transition, the signature of a branch cut becomes more and more prominent. The zeros and poles come closer to the imaginary mu b by t axis. This is n tau 4, and this is similarly for n tau 6. Now, just to show another slide of uh, how we do the error analysis and how we, how the Structure looks like when we bootstrap over all the errors. As you can see, we don't just take uh, the singular structure at the central values. We take an average of, this is just a schematic. I mean, not a schematic, but uh, just a description of what we do. So there are not so many points here, but we take of the order of 2,000 um, calculations into account. Now, again, similar to the Ezig model, can we extract some physics from these poles? Oh, sorry, before that. So the conformal plane, it's not really the same conformal plane that Gerald was talking about, but we just thought that what if our singularities that we get are just some artifact of the coordinates that we choose to expand in. So we do a map, and then we solve for the Pade, and we see again see an emergence of the branch cut. What this does is, it, it, we had some ill conditioning in a previous linear solver. It cures that and also makes, it, makes us more sensitive to this singular structure. Now we come to the scaling. So on the first we look at, first we look at the map 
of the Roberts Y scaling fields to the easing model scaling fields. T is straightforward. It's just that here the transition in the easing model, it happens on the left side, and here we are approaching it on the right side. Uh, so there's a relative minus sign. Here the, the field, the symmetry breaking field is, so for the uh, easing model, H was real, and now we are, we are seeing what are deviations from imaginary mu axis. Now, we know that the scaling fu uh, function contains all information about the singularities of a universality class. It completely depends on this scaling variable. This is related to the scaling fields in this fashion, and this is where, um, this is where Vladimir's talk comes into picture, is if fg is a universal function and it has a branch point or a singularity at some point, then that must be a universal number itself. So what we do is we put these scaling fields into zc, and we define a trajectory for the Liang zeros, and we get something that is consistent with 3 dz 2 Ising universality class, which is a good result because this is probably the third result in this direction. Uh, also, we get some estimates on the Robert Weiss transition. For n tau 4, on an independent study, they estimated 201 MeV to be, so we are, at least it's the same order of, yeah, I don't know the error bars on their number, but I think it's, it's a good result. Now, before moving to the last part, I just want to flash Here's something that will probably in, invite a lot of questions, and you can also talk to Christian about this. But can, are, can we only do Robert Y scaling, or can we do something more? We can, if you look at slide six of Vladimir, you will find these trajectories for other transitions. And we can, first, when we started our studies, we only had this yellow point, and we thought it was the chiral transition. But as we did more and more, uh, lower temperature um, estimations, we found that they actually go on a different trajectory, which uh, also Vladimir talked about is the CEP trajectory. It's a linear map to the easing. It's, a, it's an ansatz. Nobody knows really the mapping between easing and CEP, but it's an ansatz. Now to the last part, which I'll probably just display the results. So we are building on previously published work by Fridjof and his student. We're using uh, lattice simulations for Z2, O2, and O4 models. They estimated these numbers, which when you combine with the widom griffiths form, you can write your scaling function very nicely uh, in terms of those uh, parameters. And when you write it in this form, you can easily see that the Li-Yang H singularity must be located at dz by d theta equals zero. So we use those numbers into the widom griffiths form, and we estimate the absolute value and the phase. Phase, again, should be this, but b is just a coefficient, so it should be consistent with one. And the absolute value now that we obtain matches very well the FRG results, so you should match this with this, this, and this. So this is just, this is not rational approximations or anything, this is just showing that lattice data is not wrong. So, so in summary, I would hope that you have some uh, confidence on the multipoint Pade method. We have showed that you can uh, extract the, Li, uh, uh, the critical exponents on the easing model. Of course, the easing model and QCD are very different from each other. Easing model does not have a lattice spacing in it, which is a very big problem in QCD, as we also learned yesterday. Uh, we also showed that our results are consistent with the Robert Weiss endpoint being in the 3DZ2 Ising class, and we showed some consistency with uh, FRG. And I would just leave it here by saying that in 2020, we only had this plot. And with time and statistics in 2023, we have this plot. And this plot, we actually used to give an estimate of CEP, which is consistent with what Ove showed in his CEP plot. But also here are Frozart doublets, 
They always come in a unit circle around the origin, and they come when your system is very noisy. As you decrease noise, they will start to disappear, and you will only get um, uh, the true signature of your function. And basically, it's all about statistics. And who knows what happens at discrete? I mean, if we are even sensing the right um, scaling uh, universality class, but that's all for the future. So thank you.